So who we are, by the way, is, is if, if you want to, you can uh, stick in my name into Google and you'll find out all my real truths. Um, so uh, I'm Dublin based, wander over to London every once in a while. What we do is we do education. Oh, sorry, did you want me to stand here? <laughs> there's, a ca there's a camera going on and I didn't realize that. Um, uh, so what we do is we educate people in all things digital. So we have a course going on, for instance, this week, and there's maybe 20 people on that course, and they're learning all about mobile and email and SEO and search, search marketing and social media and so on. But what I want to do is just talk you through some, um, take you through some thoughts of mine around mobile marketing. So I'm not going to spend forever talking about statistics, but essentially we all know that these devices here, 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 have become massively important. So. What I'm doing is looking at it from a marketer's perspective and saying, well, how do we now engage with people if all they do is, you know, they're on the tube doing this kind of thing. So how do we engage with them? So that's the challenge that we all have as marketers, as, as mobile phones become increasingly integral in our lives. How many people here get up in the morning and check their mobile phone? Amazing, isn't it? You know, if I said to you, take out your mobile phone and give it to the next person beside you, who you don't know. It's like ripping off your arm, right? So they're massively important, whether it's an iPhone or an Android, or it doesn't matter what kind of device. This is your access to your mail, your Snapchat. My 12-year-old, by the way, is, is, is addicted to Snapchat. How many people have never heard of Snapchat? Okay, we all know that Snapchat wasn't sold for three billion, because two Egypts. 23 and 25 turned down $3 billion from Facebook. Like, how stupid? Anyway, th that's another day's discussion. So my 12-year-old is addicted to Snapchat. So he's on Snapchat all the time. And I said, Max, get off the Snapchat. How many snaps do, do you think he's, he's sent? 2,000. So I thought, wow, Max, that's astounding. How could you, how do you have the time? He says, oh, my friend Maggie, she has 23,000. She's also in his class at 12 years old. Like. Yeah, these guys are just growing up with this stuff. Anyway, so the number of desktop search, uh, searches has been surpassed, obviously, by, uh, and the Japanese were way, way ahead of us um, in terms of, of mobiles and mobile usage and internet on the mobile and email on the mobile. So the question is not really how do we do mobile, but it's actually, sorry, it's not why do we do mobile, it's how do we, how do we go about that. So I'm just going to pose five questions. Okay, and if you take these away and ask your business or ask yourself if you're running your own business, you know, these kind of questions. So how is mobile really going to affect my business and will it affect my business and if it affects my business, well then I need to jump in. And how do I jump in? So I'm going to, by the way, these slides are available from the show. If not, by the way, just email me at anthony at digitalmarketinginstitute.com and I'll send you them. So you don't have to furiously take notes. So the first one is, so how does it challenge the value proposition that I have right now? And, and a great example of this game changer is a product called Halo. Have you heard of Halo? How many people have never heard of Halo? Okay, Halo is a, an app, you stick it on this, okay? And what you do is you go, give me a taxi. And all the taxis that are signed up to Halo are indicated on a map and it says, next taxi, three minutes away. Click, I'll, I'll take it. Now what, what Halo does is, what Halo allows you to do is, uh, find your taxi really quickly. It tells you who the taxi driver is, the taxi driver who knows who I am. He can reject me, I can reject him or her. Uh, but the other thing is, I've already plugged in my credit card details, so there's no cash. Now think about the impact that that's having on society. So the black economy, is reducing more less cash taxi drivers have to uh, have to engage in some kind of audit process so it's self-regulation so this is about having a massive impact and halo is just beginning now there's a few different ones there's uber in the states and so on but there's a number of applications like this so um, smartphone users we know 91 percent um, 91 percent internet usage on them on the smartphone people we all do it, right? We go online and we search for something. We're, we're looking for, I don't know, a, the, the nearest tube station or the nearest coffee shop or whatever it is. We do it all the time. 
And what happens is most people then do something as a result of that. So the question is, how are you going to engage with your clients if you're in that kind of business? Okay, that's just some, some more stats. But the interesting thing is, and here's a really amazing thing. How many people here have ever gone into a shop? Looked at something. <laughs> no, that wasn't the end of the question. Comma. <laughs> looked at something. Because hopefully everybody here has gone into a shop. Looked at something and said, oh, I could take a picture of that and I bet you can buy that online cheaper. Yeah? We've all done it. There's a term for it. It's called showrooming. Most of us don't usually buy milk showrooming, but that's the image I could find. But what we're finding is the, the higher value products, absolutely. So um, a friend of mine runs an agency, and what they do is they are, they are running campaigns for a company who sells sports gear, like running machines, not gear that you wear, running machines and like rowing machines and you know those cross trainers. They're great, aren't they? They got you good for disco. Anyway, um, so they cost like between a grand and two grand or three grand. So that's the kind of thing you go into a shop and you go, oh, that's really interesting. And they type in the exact model. They get it back and the, the machine costs, like he was telling me about this, this specific running machine, cost 1,300 euro. Um, and they can, this, the, the company that he's working for advertises it for 1,100. So 200 quid, that's a good, good solid saving. So I'll do that. So that's showrooming, that's becoming hugely important and hugely apparent in, um, in the digital space. And obviously Amazon was a, a, brought out the app. You know, did you know that Amazon brought out an app? So you can go into a bookstore, see the book you want, you go click, there's the um, ISBN number, click, 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 I'll buy it off Amazon instead, save myself a few bob. Okay, so companies are trying to figure out how do we challenge that? How do we make sure that that doesn't affect us? Or in fact, there are some companies who are opening up stores and they have one of everything. So they say, you come in here, we actually are a showroom. Come in here, scan it, we guarantee you the best price and we ship it to you tomorrow. So that's perhaps, perhaps, what we're, we don't know yet, perhaps the new uh, retail options going forward. So the walls are becoming porous is what's happening here. So the question is, how are you going to, you know, how is that going to affect your business? So in our business, we sell training. So people come into a classroom. But obviously, we have to sell online training. So are people going to make a sudden decision? And that's probably not the way it's going to work for us. But we still have to make an offering of an online option. Uh, maybe it's a blended option. So, so mobile is affecting us in different ways. But if you're in the retail space, mobile is affecting you greatly and hugely. It really is. So the question is, your customers have gone mobile anyway. That's, that's taken for granted. Are you going to stick your head in the sand or are you going to actually do something about it? Second one is, what about your digital destinations? So how, does your, how many people here have gone to their own business on their mobile, their own site? I do it all the time. We have a crap mobile site up to about four hours ago when we switched on our new site, um, which took months to build, but it's really nice now. So go to your own site and see what customers experience. Have a look at it, because the stats tell us that if you've got a poor mobile site, then you're in deep doo-doos, and, and whoever it is is looking at your site will go somewhere else, because it's an easier site to to, um, to navigate and buy from. So to get from there to there is actually nowadays a very simple thing. It really is, it's very simple. It's, kind of, you know, it's a few hundred quid to, to transfer over. Um, so don't give your customers a bad experience. I don't work for, mo for, for Google, by the way, but there's a, a great little site that they've developed called howtogomo.com, howtogomo.com. So what you do is you plug in your site, it gives you some stats, um, and some feedback about the mobile version of your site or whether you have one. So how is your business adapting to mobile? Are you going to get, engage with this? Are you going to let it drift? Are you going to have evangelists? I would suggest you have somebody in the company, depending on the size of the company, you have somebody or some people in the company who are really enthused about, about mobile, who are really pushing mobile out. Uh, sorry, I'm just checking the time because I know I'm going to be kicked off in about 10 minutes. Whoa, no is the answer. So do engage with people in your, in your company. Find out who the geeks are. The geeks are now the new gods, by the way. Um, so in Dublin, by the way, just to, just, it's, it's becoming a very digital center. So you have like 
Google employ about 2,000 there. Facebook are at about 800 or 900, I think. Twitter, a couple of hundred. LinkedIn are there. Dropbox is there. Zynga is there. Microsoft, eBay, Yahoo, they're all there. So Dublin is particularly geekful. Um, but geeks are, ru are running the world now. So find the geek in your company. Maybe you are that geek. And evangelize mobile. Please do, look, see that reserved. Forget it, forget it. So find the, find the geek and, and get them to do things like this. Ask the questions. So what's mobile all about? How do I test, uh, by the way, um, I don't expect you to read all that type of stuff, but essentially ask the question, how is this stuff gonna work? How am I gonna measure it? What's gonna be a success? What's gonna be a failure? If I, if I, move, my mobile, if I move my site to mobile, What's going to be a fail? How, how am I going to test it? How am I going to measure it? And that's the real challenge that I think we all have. Because you know what? This wasn't around, well, this was what, five years old? Was it 2005 the iPhone 1 came out? Anyone know? 2007? Okay, so it's now five and a half, six years old. So none of us are experts. Nobody is the expert. We're all learning on the go because this is new to everybody. So, you know, you, rest assured that I can tell you one thing. We start uh, every single one of our class, classes, courses, by introducing, everybody introduces them, each other, themselves. Within about half an hour, everybody realizes this is fantastic. Everybody is in the same boat. They don't know shit either. They really don't. You were on a course, right? Everybody is, comes in the same, exactly the same. They don't know. You know. There'll be somebody who knows SEO really well. There'll be somebody, else. you were on a course, were you? Yep, there you go. Is that right? Yep. So somebody knows SEO and can help the class as well as the lecturer in SEO. Somebody knows mobile more than others and can help the class as well as the lecturer. So what happens is the class actually, because they're a bunch of professionals, that's who we in the main teach, are helping each other and it's becoming a class of 30 people, 31 people including the lecture, as opposed to just one person teaching the whole lot. Would that, would that be a fair summary by the way? That's what we found uh, over and over again. So there's a whole bunch of measurables and objectives and so on that you can ask yourself about mobile. But you really do need to jump in. So if you do and when you do, the question is how will the marketing infrastructure change? The marketing and the infrastructure. The marketing infrastructure itself and how will the infrastructure change? And you know, there's all this talk about bring your own device and all that kind of stuff. And that's a challenge, uh, more so for larger companies than small companies. So if one person wants to work on a, uh, an iPad and another person wants to work on a Mac and another person wants to work on a desktop and another person wants to work on their gaming machine or whatever it is, how do we manage all that? But how does that affect the marketing? So let me give you a couple of examples. So we're all familiar with this screen. Has anyone never seen this screen? Few. Okay, we're in the, we're in the digital marketing show. That's good. So we've sorted that one. Okay, so I did a, uh, a Google search for dentists in Paddington, and I got that. Now, that screen, by the way, and you, this is, you'll know this, and you'll know this, that is not made up by magic. Google do not have a magic potion, but they do have a rule book and they never give the rule book to anybody. So you have to figure out what the rules are. And there's a whole bunch of people in the digital marketing industry who know vaguely what the rules are. They, you know, they're 99% the, uh, the, uh, sure, but Google might decide to change. So Google are definitely the owners of the ball and they can move and change and take the ball away if they feel like it. But the rules are fairly standard now. So what we have is we have two parts to this screen, actually three parts. This part here is advertising. This part here is what's called organic. Most people are familiar with that. If I type in dentists in Paddington, Google goes through its database of seven trillion websites and says, okay, who's number one? Who's optimized best? In other words, who's given us the most clues regarding, um, regarding the, the key phrase or the phrase dentists in Paddington? And the paddingtondental.co.uk come up number one and if we look over here, they're over here somewhere, by the way. And they're also, no, no, they're not, they're not advertising. So they're optimized here. Uh, paddingtondental.co.uk are also here uh, on the map. So there they are on the map number A. So they've got two slots on that screen. 
So I'd probably go to them, or maybe I'd go to zesty.co.uk, but it doesn't sound like a dentist to me, so maybe I wouldn't go there. So I might go to that one, but increasingly, people are looking at those ads. So those are ads. Hello, hello. Google introduced that about a year ago, May last year, um, mapping, so you can find places really quickly. And here's where it gets interesting. Let's do the same search on a mobile. And guess what? Zestier there, Zestier there. So in fact, look at that, look at that. Uh, and NHS, ah, okay, first of all, this is very important. The click to call button. Yeah, they both have a click to call button. Now click to call is, imagine you're on your phone and you do a search, how are we doing on time? Um, Imagine you're on your phone, you do a search for dentists, you're too, th you've fallen over. <laughs> Here we have, okay, we just got off the tube, we've fallen over, cracked my tooth, I need a dentist. Not very nice, huh? If it's sore. Anyway, so I needed to get a dentist. What am I going to do? I'm going to push that button, right? So imagine if that button wasn't there. What would they do? They'd go to the next one. The difference between the um, uh, results from people with a click to call button and those not are about 40%. Massive difference, massive difference. So it's massively important to understand the differences between desktop and non-desktop. By the way, that was dentist in Paddington. Dentist near Paddington, completely different screen on the desktop, okay? Zesty are still there, Paddington, they're still there, but they got the whole lot over here on the right-hand side. So Google is recognizing that these guys are basically synonymous with that term. So you need to figure out what your term is. Does everybody know what their own keywords are for their own business? So a little promo for ourselves again, in our business, if you search for digital marketing course, we want to be number one. Digital marketing training, we want to be number one. If you're in the dentistry business and you're in Paddington, you want to be number one for dentists near Paddington, okay? And then we go online, or sorry, we go onto mobile, and guess what? No phone number here on that one, which is, oh, no, let me go back. Let me, uh, is it here, church, church something? Church? No, it's not even here. So they've gone to the trouble of ad spending money. So this is not done by chance, right? They've gone to the, the trouble of spending money to put their ad here so that people click, and then they forgot a basic a real piece of basic um, option on AdWords. Do people run AdWords here? Many people run AdWords, yeah? Yeah, so you're running AdWords, get that one right. So there's different criteria for mobiles as opposed to, stand, uh, to the desktops. Starwood Hotels, by the way, it's just a case study that, uh, that a number of people use in the industry. They've increased return on investment by about 20% when they moved on to mobile. Okay. So this is the other thing, by the way, experience your business on a mobile as your customers would. So go onto the mobile, search for, in my case, digital marketing courses, see what there is. And if it's not number one, I go nuts. And if it's not number two, number, if it's not on the screen, I lose the reason, I lose the plot. You want to see what people say about me in the office. Because I come in and, and you know, this is our business. This is your business. If you're a blacksmith, I'm sorry, a locksmith, Locksmiths get calls because people lose their car keys outside their house, so it's a very mobile uh, friendly problem. And they lose, mobile, they lose their keys inside the car. So I have a locksmith friend who, who tells me they constantly get phone calls from people in, uh, who have lost their keys outside the house or in the car, constantly. They are number one in Google mobile all the time. Desktop, actually, they get very little traffic from. The, the, the solution has already been, the problem has been solved by the time they get to the desktop. So think about your business in terms of mobile. So, and how do we connect? Final one is mobile then leads to multi-screen because now what we've got is we've got iPhones and iPads and i this and i that and Samsung this and Samsung that and then television. So a great example is I was watching Breaking Bad. Have you seen Breaking Bad? It's awesome. Anyway, um, so I was watching Breaking Bad the other day, the kids came in, can I watch iCardi or whatever? They don't watch iCardi, they're boys. They watch some stupid thing. I don't know. Anyway, um, so I was chucked off the telly 
the TV. So I just went on to the, the mobile device, uh, the, my laptop, and continued watching. And then I didn't get to the end of it, so I watched the end of it the next day on this yoke. So that's the world we live in. Get used to it. You can walk away from it and pretend it doesn't exist, but that's it. And you know what? The younger kids, of which most of you are younger than me, uh, that's normal. That, this is just normal stuff for them. So get used to this, because most of, most of what we read is online, as opposed to in what we, what we um, consume in newspapers and so on. Uh, and we have two modes that we can either sequentially do something, research. Hey, I'll give you a great example. And it's, it's, it's very unfair because we were the winners. So what happened was there's, there's the Marketing Institute of Ireland and the Digital Marketing Institute. We both offer something similar in Dublin. And so, you know, the, the IDM who are here will offer something similar to us. So the Marketing Institute of Ireland ran some ads on the radio and they said, Did, uh, get your digital marketing degree, blah, 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 blah. And they ran them on the evening show. Now what happened on the radio? So it was drive time. So people are driving home. So they hear the ad on the radio. And what do they do when they get into the office the next day or the, that evening? They go online and they go, digital marketing training, digital marketing cert, digital marketing course. Now, I can laugh about it because we got all, about, all the calls. The people were ringing us up and saying, heard your ad on the radio, can I book your course? And we went, sure, brilliant ad, yeah, thanks, great. Fantastic. However, from the Marketing Institute's point of view, they blew it because they hadn't joined the dots. They, they, did, they went on the radio, but they didn't follow up and say, if somebody then goes into the office and searches, they didn't, they didn't follow that through. That, that's a video that I'm not going to show, and I would like to thank you very much. Do you want me to go back to those questions, by the way, right at the beginning? Yeah, because these are the questions you need to be asking. But thank you very much. I am now right out of time because I've been pushed off. Ha -ha. Uh, anyone got any quick questions, by the way? Am I allowed to do that? Ding. Any quick questions? We will Ding. ask, because Anthony uh, is very entertaining and, and, and has a wealth of information. Any couple of quick questions? Ah, that anybody? was only, we only scraped the top. <laughs> <laughs> scraped the surface. Yep. Oh. Hi there. Um, I'm sure you get asked this question all the time, but with um, Google making all the changes in the last year or two, Panda and Penguin and all those other sort of animal names, <laughs> um, is there any point still trying to do lots of work with organic search, or is this all about trying to, them trying to get you to do more AdWords? That's really interesting. So, so with all the changes, you, know, you, may, you may have heard of panda and penguin and crocodiles, and I'm sure there's pussycats and rabbits and so on out there. But yeah, Google make changes all the time. That's what I was referring to right at the beginning, which is they own the ball. We have to play with their ball. And if they don't like it, they'll change the ball. They move from rugby to, to soccer and back again whenever they feel like it. So should we just spend money on advertising? That's actually a very solid, there's a solid argument behind that. However, what I would do is, uh, if you think about the Google screen on this or on your, mobile, uh, your, your desktop, actually see if you can dominate the whole lot. And that's where content marketing is kicking in. So there's a big buzz around content marketing at the moment. And content is essentially giving people information about your business which doesn't try and fool anybody. And that was that, the problem with Google, the problem that Google have had in the last, you know, they're only 15 years old. Astounding. Anyway, um, the problem that they had was it was easy enough to fool Google. So a, 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 an SEO expert could, knew how to get to number one in Google by putting spammy stuff in. It was called, it's called black SEO or dark SEO. And Google is just trying to improve that. So you can, be, you can rest assured that over the coming months and years, the results that appear organically at the top of Google actually have a relevance and make sense, because they want you to come back over and over again in or, because they're delivering good results. So whether you advertise or whether you or, or optimize organically, it's probably going to take you the same amount of time and money. Uh, my preference is, if you think about it, there's about 12 slots, tops, on a Google page. If you can own as many of them as possible, we, we try and own three or four. But on, on this, there's only three or four, so you own, try and own two. Does that answer the question? Content marketing will, will help there. Okay. Thank you very much well for your done. time. Thank you very we much. could speak for another two hours quite easily. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good luck.